Um, I want to begin today with a question, okay? What is the difference between poetry and prose? What is the difference between what we're doing um, this week and what you did a couple weeks ago, okay? Uh, because you're not here to answer the question, <laughs> um, I'm going to propose a potential answer. I'm going to say uh, it's the line. Okay, the line is the difference between poetry and prose. Poetry makes use of the line, while prose makes use of the sentence as the sort of um, basic unit of meaning here. Um, now, that can get a little fuzzy, and people will dispute that, and in fact, I will dispute it, um, because uh, of a thing called prose poetry that we might have occasion to look at later in the, uh, in the class. Um, uh, which is, you know, it resembles a little block of prose. There are no lines, but yet we're still willing to call it poetry. So this is not a, um, a hard and fast designation, but for the most part, for the vast majority of poetry, it holds true. Poems are made of lines, and prose is made up of sentences. Okay? Um, so if that is the case, how do poets figure out what constitutes a line? Right? I mean, so far in the class, we've seen long lines and we've seen short lines. We've seen medium-length lines, too. So think about um, the, uh, the packet from yesterday when you had kind of the prototypical example in American poetry of the long line versus the short line. We have um, uh, Walt Whitman, his you know, huge, languorous lines, versus Dickinson's short, compact lines. Okay? How did they decide that? You know? For, for Dickinson, it's kind of clear because she's using ballad meter. Um, and, in fact, it was clear for um, everyone up until the 20th century, for the most part, right? Um, because they wrote in meter. All right? That's how they knew, that's how poets knew when to stop the line. So, for instance, um, Shakespeare, in the sonnet you looked at yesterday, when he wrote the first line, he said, well, okay, when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, and he said, oh, hey, that has ten syllables and, uh, and five stresses, so I'm going to start a new line and go to the next one. Right? He knew when to end the line, okay? Um, it was very clear. <laughs> um, but now, now that we write in free verse and that we don't use, um, or at least don't use as often, uh, strict meters like that, you know, now we don't really know. There's no clear, clear place when the line should, uh, should end, okay? So, how do we know that? Well, it has to do with um, the line break, okay? Um, issues related to the line break. Now, you're going to read... Um, uh, another Mary Oliver essay, and she's going to provide a pr pretty solid introduction to free verse poetry, okay? Um, but, uh, but she works on the coverage model, as you probably know by now, right? She hits a lot of different topics, she kind of skims the surface, gives you, a, gives you a general picture of the landscape. I want to delve a little bit um, closer here to, uh, to the line break, okay? In particular to enjambment. So, um, there are two different kinds of line breaks, all right, um, in free verse poetry. There's enjambment, Okay, and there is the end stop. Okay, and incidentally, these things um, uh, exist obviously for uh, for metered poetry as well, right? If you look at the old poems, you'll see that a hey, the same thing's going on. Um, but they but they don't acquire the, necessarily the same importance um, because in those cases, you know when the line's going to end. It's dictated by the number of um, by syllables, as as we've seen, right? But for free verse poetry, this is very important. Okay, um, so what is enjambment and what is end stop? All right, well, let's look at um, a poem. Let's look at the Frank O'Hara poems, um, page uh, 208 here. Um, you read The Day Lady Died, I believe, but let's look at the poem above that, um, Why I Am Not a Painter, okay? Um, the Day Lady Died would be useful, except that there are no... Um, he's not using punctuation in this particular poem, and so it's a little harder to see which, which is an enjambment, which is an end stop, right? Uh, but in Why I Am Not a Painter, he does, and so it's very clear, even in this first stanza here. So... I am not a painter. I am a poet. Period. Right? That's an end stopped line. There is a grammatical mark that indicates a stop at the end of the line. Okay? Pretty clear there, right? Um, why? I think I would rather be... Okay. Nothing at the end of that line. That's an enjambment. Okay? This means that the line is broken in the middle of the sentence. All right, the code of the line and the sentence um, do not line up, right? Okay, um, and that's an enjambment, right? In the third line, um, well, what, what, is, what is it that you'd rather be? A painter, okay, it picks up again, but I am not. Well, and then ending on a comma, um, while not as much of an end stop as, uh, as a period, still is an end stop, right, because there's a, there's a mark of punctuation um, delineating 
uh, sort of a pause there. Okay? Um, so, enjambment is simply where you break the line um, in the middle of the sentence. Okay? Uh, it happens a great, uh, it happens a lot in free verse poetry, and, it, and it's a very useful tool for poets. Okay? Um, so when do you do this? When do you decide that you're going to break the line in the middle? Why do you do that? Um, how do you learn? You know, um, I had a teacher who told me that it takes 10 years of reading and writing poetry in order to get a sense of, uh, of when to break the line. Um, just kind of an intuitive ear for it, you know. Um, I'm certainly not there yet, I don't think. I'm coming up on 10 years, but not, not quite. So who knows if I know <laughs> even, but, um, but I can sort of outline the problem for you in, uh, in, in a sense here. Um, one issue is that sentences are what we call public, okay? Um, and grammar, or, excuse me, sentences are what we call public and line breaks are private. And what I mean by public is that um, sentences abide by sort of universally agreed upon grammar rules, right? We know, hey, if you see a period, everyone knows that means stop, right? You, know, you see a comma, everyone knows that means take a little pause, okay? They're public in that everyone knows how to read it, okay? Um, but, but line breaks are private because it's the poet's decision when to um, break the line in the middle, right? So in a way, um, line breaks kind of indicate, the, or poetry itself is kind of a, um, a reconciliation or, or a, um, a putting together of public and private codes, of public and private rules. Um, and, uh, and so that becomes kind of a nice definition for poetry, but I won't, I won't pause over this because it's a little, uh, he had a little heady, right? Uh, this is something that a lot of uh, poetry theorists like to, like to think about. But, um, but really there are two reasons um, to break the line, okay? Um, there is music and there is meaning. Okay? Um, music and meaning. So, in the case of music, in the case of sound, um, the line break, uh, you know, and jamming a line in the middle of a sentence um, can be used to emphasize the, the natural rhythms of the language. All right? Um, obviously, even in free verse poetry, there's, there's natural rhythms to how we speak. There's sound to the language, right? Um, in order to kind of punctuate that, in order to kind of um, guide the reader of the poem in hearing these rhythms, um, poets can enjam, okay? And uh, so in order to kind of make use of this one um, tool as a reader, um, it's a good idea to pause briefly at the end of a line that is enjammed when you're reading it out loud, okay? Um, take kind of a quick short breath, all right? So for instance, um, you know, I would read, um, let's say I would read the day lady died, uh, it is 12.20 in New York, a Friday, three days after Bastille Day. Yes, it is 19.59, and I go get a shoe shine because I will get off the 419 in East Hampton at 7.15. So you're not, you're not quite, you know, taking a full, um, a full pause. You know, think of it as kind of a half comma or something like that. And that can kind of allow you to hear the rhythms that the poet intends to highlight um, with his enjambment or her enjambment. Okay. Um, uh, a really great example of this is the poem you're going to read by Carl Phillips. Um, he's a master of the hard enjambment, right? And uh, and uh, so read that, read that, read that out loud, and pay attention to how you're pausing over the line breaks. Don't simply read over it, um, because it you know it gives you a sense of, of what the poet is actually trying to do with these lines. You know, um, if the poet wanted you to write, or, excuse me, if the poet wanted you to read it all the way through, they would probably just write it as as a prose. You know, um, but the lines have have an, have meaning and integrity. Um, so that's the that's the me that's the music half of it, right? Um, that's part of why lines are enjammed. Uh, the other half um, is related to meaning, okay? The sense of um, of a line, what it means, all right? Um, when you break a line, um, invariably the line itself that you've broken becomes a kind of a unit, okay? Um, it becomes a kind of a unit, and then you have two kinds of units in the poem. You have the unit of the sentence, right? You can, I mean, you can take a poem and break it apart into sentences and see what sentence is what and what sentence is what, but you also have the line, right? So you have like kind of two levels of meaning, and the interaction between these levels is kind of interesting, you know? Um, so my favorite example of this, great example of this, um, uh, I think a beautiful moving moment in the history of contemporary poetry. Um, the poet James Wright, uh, who, who you've read, um, the, the hammock poem was by him, right? Um, 
uh, I've wasted my life, right? Um, he, uh, he was dying in the early 80s. He was dying of um, a throat cancer, I believe it was, right? So he's in the hospital, and he, um, uh, he, his friend Richard Hugo, right, who you've also read, right, came to visit him. Um, and, um, and so, you know, Richard Hugo went over to the, to the hospital bed, and, um, and by this point, James Wright could not, could not speak, right? The throat cancer was that advanced. He couldn't speak. He had to write everything down, right? So Richard Hugo comes over to him, and he writes down, and I'm going to illustrate this on the, on the little blackboard here, um, because you need to see it. He writes down, um, this, okay? I'm dying. Right, and so uh, so Richard Hugo, poor guy, he sees this. He says, "Oh, you know, uh, Jim, you know James. I, I I know, I know. I'm so sorry to hear that, you know. But hey, you've lived a great life. It's gonna be okay." And then um, and then James Wright takes the thing back, or takes the little you know pad of paper back, and he finishes um, his sentence here. Dying for a bowl of ice cream. Okay, um, so this is um, this is of course a kind of uh, you know humorous example. I mean, really kind of a very moving and, and sad example of, of the power, but um, of, of a line break. But but James Wright himself is a master of the line break. Um, so the the idea here is that the the first line itself, I'm dying, right. Um, has a kind of integrity to it. Has a kind of it's a kind of unit of the meaning, right? Um, and even if you see, even if we say this was a poem, right, a three-line poem, and if we saw this all together at one time, um, reading it through, we would still feel, in just reading the first line before the rest of the poem, a kind of um, you know, I mean, we would feel the the meaning of that sentence. I'm dying, you know. Of course, it would suddenly be be relieved by the next lines, right? We would say, oh yeah, okay, I see, you're not actually dying, you're dying for a bowl of ice cream, right? But but the idea that this is um, that the line is broken right here gives us just a little bit of a moment of, you know, a little bit of dread. Okay, um, and so that's why this this three line poem here is so different from just one sentence that says, "I'm dying for a bowl of ice cream." I'm dying for a bowl of ice cream is a much different thing. I hope you can see that, right? Um, that's the power of of the line break by isolating. These, these two words up here. Suddenly, the poem takes on um, some tension and conflict, okay? So, um, that's why we break for meaning, okay? I'm going to ask you in the, um, in the assignment for today to kind of analyze um, some of these uh, uh, line breaks in the poems you're going to read um, and to see what's going on. I mean, not all examples are going to be as stark as that. Um, and, and sometimes they'll be broken partly for music and partly for meaning, right? And you won't be able to decide exactly which, right? Um, and it's true that as you write more poems, um, as you read more poems, you'll be kind of you, you'll sort of develop an intuitive sense, an intuitive ear for when you're going to break your lines. But even in those cases, even when you're a publishing poet and, uh, and you kind of just, you know, you're breaking lines all over the place, um, you should be able to go back, right, when the dust settles and see why you've done it and be able to say, well, I did it because of the meaning, I did it because of the music, I did it because of a certain combination between those two things, okay? Um, it's kind of cool, right? It's kind of, it's a, for those of you who are interested in, um, in, uh, in the sciences and analysis, right? This is kind of a, a little take on that. Um, so today you're going to read poems by Phillips, or, um, who, I, who I mentioned, a poem by Creeley. Robert Creeley, who incidentally will sometimes break a, a line in the middle of a word, <laughs> so he's a he's a hard and jammer. Um, and then and then something very different by Allen Ginsberg. Uh, maybe some of you have read Hal before um, his poem. Uh, he uses very long lines, reminiscent of Whitman. Um, and I want you to I'm going to ask you to think a little bit about about that poem. Okay, um, you're doing great work so far. Okay, um, keep it up. We won't be having a video. I think in the next two days, the next video will be for Friday. Um, so if you have any questions, please um, please don't hesitate to, to email me. Okay, thanks, guys.